He is a TO. He plays Pichu and Sephiroth, I believe. And uh, Seppi's partner is a Zelda player. So I'm very excited to see what they can do. Uh, it looks like Ty is going to be playing Sephiroth here. Uh, and just starting off, we're going to have actually two Zeldas. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, a really good character for just defensive play in general. Phantom being one of the better projectiles in the game. And just creates a nice little shield for you. And it just it basically controls a lot of area. Yeah, the fun thing about Zelda is that it constantly gives these characters with high mobility a place to re consistently retreat to. Though it really seems like Ty is primarily focused on blade charge as a means of approach, so they're trying to cover a lot more horizontal space. Be careful with those up smashes as they clip onto Seppi. I like how both of our blue team are trying to focus on stage control, but it really feels like red team's high mobility. Ooh. Oh, that shield break is huge! You gotta keep on the defense. Oh both of them gosh. follow the lightning kick! Holy! Okay, cleaned okay. up with the Fento. That was, what a turnaround from that shield break. Amazing partner setup on ledge there, thanks to the Octo Slash. And Seppi with the cleanup, what an amazing start. Just a great job on awareness from Seppi, just understanding that the shield was low, getting able to go into the shield break. And then seeing that both uh, VJ and T uh, the Fento Peak were there, and just capitalizing off the Fento Kick. That was a beautiful play by both of them. Unfortunate drop of the stock uh, on the part of Sefi, but it looks like Ty should be able to recover. It does give a lot of our send, but it keeps the wing online, which will make a huge dividend for Blue Team if Ty is able to hold on to this down throw into nothing. Got to watch out for some of this collateral damage as both of these, uh, both the Blue Team and their heavy hitters on deck. Nice job on VJ, uh, able to go for the Nehru's love and get Ty off stage. Looks like he is going to just let him recover. And we are going to see VJ on their last stock. Yeah, some excellent cleanup job being done by Sefi, not only for keeping uh, the uh, Keith off stage uh, with Arsene, keeping that ledge trap going, but also separating VJ and Ty to the other side of the screen. They're keeping this rather consistently into two 1v1s, and when they're put together, that's when uh, Sephiroth's sweeping hitboxes can do a lot of damage. Yep, and it looks like Sephiroth, or Ty's going to lose his first stock here. Sefi is going to get the dare and put T uh, the Phantom Keith on his last stock. Yeah, like whatever Sefi took early, she is on the hunt as that chase down with the lightning kick was so well timed on the air dodge. Amazing frame trap, and now we see like a four stocks to one deficit at low percent. But you got to put on a lot of work whenever this Arsene pops, which will be soon. I mean, Joker is definitely the character that could do it with Arsene. You just have crazy explosive comeback potential, and Sefi being on 120, I'm not saying that they can do it, but it's definitely possible. Nice counter coming out, going to be able to take Seppi out, and 52% on Ty. Yeah, they're, they're playing it super well, missing the upper afterwards, kind of reliant on this Tetracarn. It's high risk, high reward, but sometimes you need to go for some of those crazy plays. This Arsene is getting rather low, and that grab will do it. Ooh, trying to go for the up smash there, uh, to capitalize off the throw, but instead going to hit Selfie. TPK, TPK, not in a good spot. Gonna get uh, hit by the Phantom. Not quite dead though. Oh, and now they're going out for the edge guard as well, despite the air dodge being used. That was, okay, the same coverage. The same coverage every time. When you see Sephiroth sitting there, charging up smash, uh, which uh, Ty did every time that, uh, that it's TPK grabbed a ledge, it forced an action out of TPK. Mm -hmm if they were getting pressure. Like this this up smash right here, what uh, what this setup does is it cover is it has Sefi react to jump and yep. then this up smash should cover every anything from neutral get up to roll. But the problem is TPK could have just stayed it here and done nothing at all. Just waited for the up smash to roll out and seeing what they did afterward. You are susceptible to a little bit of things like Sephiroth okay. down tilt, but you survive for a little bit longer and give yourself a little bit of time to adjust to the situation. But yeah, overall, it was just like a really good coverage by both of them. Like, you have this giant hitbox and barely missing that. I'm actually a little bit shot, but Seppi was able to capitalize off of it. Uh, looks like for game two, we are going to be going to Kalos. I like the open area. It's definitely going to allow for Zelda's to kind of space out more and uh, uh, for fan more defensive play. Uh, the platforms are going to be good to extend your horizontal. Uh, looks like Seppi has already taken VJ off stage and able to get Phantom. Might take the stop. Not quite. Yeah, the problem, the, the good and bad things about Kalos as Sefi does take the first stop, not even being touched yet, 
Uh, the problem and the good things about Talos is that if you have two players that are very confident in their own sustainability, you can survive for a very long time and separate this into uh, some very strong positions on ledge. But the problematic part of this comes in the fact that supporting your teammate becomes that much harder. As we saw in that first stop, DJ had no support throughout the entirety of that first stock, and it really seems like they are getting overwhelmed in the ditto. Yep. And it definitely seems like you were talking about earlier, they are just kind of going to these 1v1s, and I actually think that if you're uh, Joker and Zelda, you're going to want to not keep in those 1v1s. I feel like Zelda kind of capitalizes more off of just keeping your partner at bay, and Joker can just gun camp. Um, so I feel like you just kind of want to play a little bit more defensively and not just kind of rush in. They're going to be a change in strategy of, uh, in some regard, whether that be co keeping closer together, like you say, or trying to capitalize more on a Joker's explosive movement. Like down six stocks to four, and uh, beautiful Josh already on death's door once more. You have to change something up if you're looking to take out this game as it, beautiful Josh loses their second stock in turn. Finding the finisher on either of these two, we're not quite, especially Sephiroth, who's not known for their survivability. Ty and Sephi are doing an amazing job of utilizing the counterpick to their own advantage. Yeah, and oh. the down air comes in. Yeah, you've got to watch out for that trap coming out from a lot of uh, Sephiroth players. They'll just do jump, get up, down air, and it's going to catch a lot of people trying to trying to chase you. It's actually insane, like, how much that dare can cover. And it's so scary. Like, if you get hit by it, you're dead. It's just insane. Look at these percentages, by the way. Like 195 on tie, and the counter does get reflected. Oh. I like the idea of drop shield counter, but I mean, the Nehru's love. You definitely got a lot of mileage out of your stock, and especially Sephiroth, like, light is Pikachu and Olimar. You're, that is crazy to be living to 200%. So, you know what? Can't even complain here. Yeah. You're and not mad at all, especially with that up the out of shield that the Ferrores win, almost finding the stock on the up air. Yeah. At this point, you, you're basically just watching out for uh, either Joker's counter, whether it be the Rebel's Guard or Tetracarn, or the uh, the defensive option from Beautiful jo uh, Beautiful Josh. There's not much otherwise that's going to really be able to mount this comeback, especially with a team kill like that. Unfortunate, but overall we're going to see the same scenario. 2v1 coming out. Sefi finally losing their first stop. Let's go. <laughs> DJ 100% on yeah, this them. Is... It's not looking great. Uh, pretty, this certainly isn't. As the up, oh, the jump call was there as well, but not finding the up air. Oh, gonna get the down smash though. Okay, that was cool. Uh, I, I, I was a fan of that. Yeah, like, I, Joker's, uh, several down smash I found out is insane. Like, oh, it has, I actually didn't know this. It has two different versions where if you like hit the ground or if you don't, um, so if you hit the ground with it, it creates like a rock, like fly up, and then it's gonna create a hitbox around that. Right. And it's massive. Yeah, yeah they. They gave Sephiroth enough to be good, but he's also, like, especially in singles, a little bit more punishing to play. Yeah. Which keeps him relatively balanced, but make no mistake, Sephiroth is broken. I think, yeah, I think overall he's probably the most balanced of the DLCs. Like, not super bad, not super broke. I, I, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, especially with the DLC takes. But I do like how, especially in this last replay, you're getting, you get to see the true confidence between blue team you got to see how good a player like Sefi was in a forward position which isn't what we were really expecting to start off we were expecting more of a defense a defensive stronghold out of the Zelda play but Sefi oftentimes was taking that forward still playing rooted but taking that step forward and allowing the range of Sephiroth and ties in and out uh, speed to get in and poke with forward airs, to poke with blade chargers, and to start taking over the air and taking over the natural reaction to a lot of Zelda stuff, which is jumping.